The Titanic is one of many modern tragedies. The sheer death count, the iconic claims that it was unsinkable, and the famous 1997 Leonardo DiCaprio film have all cemented its place in our history books. One of the deadliest ships in the world certainly isn't going to fade from our memories anytime soon. With more than 1,500 casualties, this is the deadliest cruise ship to ever sail during peacetime. Whilst the tragic events are undeniably devastating, the unfortunate tends to invite intrigue and the Titanic is no different. The vainglorious White Star Line ship sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912, when it hit an iceberg on its very first journey. The famous ship advertised and claimed as unsinkable, yet it failed to survive its maiden voyage. Whilst this ironic twist in what could have been a momentous journey is crushing and has permanently stained the pages of history, the morals of getting ahead of oneself, overestimating their abilities and being too confident are not lost on the modern audience. From the captain of the ship and the wealthy first-class passengers to the emigrants moving to the USA for a better future, everyone had a less than unsinkable experience. The allegedly foolproof safety features included watertight doors, space for 48 lifeboats, and of course, the stellar advertisement and public attention. Despite the 48 lifeboat spaces, the Titanic carried just 20, four of which proved difficult to use, leaving enough spaces for 1,178 people out of the estimated 2,224 passengers and crew aboard, just over half the number of boats needed. So it is without a doubt that you've heard of this major historical event, where the unthinkable happened and the unsinkable sunk. Perhaps you've seen the hit movie, sat in your history class making notes, or maybe you even have ancestors who boarded the ship itself. No matter how many times we revisit this event, there is so much history that we don't tell about the Titanic. So many pages go unread, and so many stories are left untold. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be delving into the stories behind three rare Titanic images. Rare Titanic Love Letters offers insight into life on board the Titanic. Even today, with the ease of texting, DMing or emailing someone, there is something so lovely about a handwritten letter. Whether it's a birthday card or a reminder post-it, handwritten pieces prove to be of great sentimental value. Even when we didn't have the choice but to write, the notes and messages left are still ever so meaningful. Of course, it isn't without surprise that a passenger on the world's first unsinkable ship, the almighty and highly fantastic Titanic, would write home. One letter written by Kate Buss on April 10, 1912, just five days before the worst would happen, lays out some of the experiences she had as a second-class passenger. The letter, sent by Kate Buss, was received by Percy James and has been kept by the family since he first opened it. Buss speaks of receiving letters from James and how the journey was going. Some details are seemingly trivial, speaking of being tired and heading to, quote, dinner tea in half an hour. Other parts of her letter, however, are much more interesting at least to those other than Percy James. Buss described the first-class apartments on the ship as really magnificent, and mentions that unless you had first seen them, you would think the second class were the same. Her letter mentions who she ate with and was sharing her state room with, who people speculate she sat with for company throughout the journey due to them all travelling as second-class passengers. The Titanic could host 833 first-class passengers, 614 second-class passengers, and a staggering 1,006 third-class. The Titanic is often compared to contemporary high-class hotels, embracing the design of such places as the Ritz. This boat of luxury and class didn't end with the hotel inspiration. First-class cabins used the Empire style, with the Renaissance style and Louis XV inspiring first- and second-class public areas and second-class cabins. The seemingly bizarre decor for a boat intended to create the impression of a floating hotel, not an actual ship. Kate Buss, as a second-class passenger, was able to enjoy the lavish decor and comfort of first-class experiences, simply missing out on features such as the saltwater swimming pool, squash court and common rooms, one of which intended to resemble the Palace of Versailles. 
there were many other distinctions between first and second class passengers, leading many to believe Bus spent her time with those travelling within the same class. This beautiful letter was signed, Much Love, Kate, and like many beautiful stories and artefacts, has been put to auction with the pre-sale estimate of between £20,000 and £25,000. Kate Buss did manage to survive the shipwreck, giving this written romance a happy ending. Buss was saved in lifeboat number 9 and was reportedly the last to leave as she had a fear of heights. This beautiful letter not only lets us glimpse into life as a second-class passenger upon the Titanic, but the story has a heartwarming ending as Kate survived the journey. She passed away on July 12, 1972, at the age of 96. The Titanic survivors arrive home, 1912. Of course, the deaths and the tragic losses are so often discussed with the Titanic, and though any losses are terrible, there were some who survived, making their way home safely only to prompt a wave of public grief. Following the sinking of the ship, the debris lay floating, sinking, drifting in the ocean water, accompanied by an unfair loss of so many lives, as passengers and crew members alike were left in the sea, fighting to stay alive. Of the estimated 2,224 crew and passenger members on board, only 750 made it on to the rescue ship, the RMS Carpathia. At 3.30am, the lights of the Carpathia were first spotted, bringing hope to the passengers who remained. Whilst the ship began bringing people on board at 4am, it took hours to bring each person on board safely before bringing people safely back to shore. The Carpathia didn't particularly have a smooth journey itself, travelling at a high speed to reach the scene of the Titanic quickly enough having to weave through the icebergs too, and, of course, travelling through the night. Once the survivors were brought aboard, the Carpathia headed on toward Pier 54 in New York, where it docked in the evening of April 18th. The crew had to negotiate pack ice, fog, thunderstorms and the choppy seas, all with extremely tentative and unsettled passengers. The welcome home was not the one that families were expecting. Though some were made aware of the Titanic's fatal collapse due to radio messages sent from and between Carpathia and other ships, the vast majority of the public remained blissfully unaware of the tragedy until three days after she sank, when so few passengers who had boarded returned home. The time after was filled with anger, grief and devastation, with petitions and movements to amend maritime safety laws reaching an all-time high. The high-running emotions are seen captured in these photographs as people are left with their lives drastically altered. The Iceberg That Sank the Titanic The villain of the Titanic story is the iceberg, the hulking mass that sank the unsinkable and wrote itself into the pages of history. At 11.40pm on the 14th of April 1912, the Titanic and the iceberg met. Whilst the iceberg is what sliced the ship open, could there be another reason that it sank? The boat scraped its right-hand side along the iceberg just below the water level. As we all know, what we see of an iceberg above the water is really just the tip. The hulking 90% of it is below surface level, tucked out of sight. Five watertight compartments, side by side, were ripped open upon impact, creating the fatal damage that tore open the front of the ship. Many have suggested that if just a single or perhaps even four of the watertight compartments had been damaged like this, then the Titanic may have managed to survive, though five was simply too much damage to work with. It was at 2.20am, two hours and 40 minutes later, that the ship finally slipped below the water. As we mentioned before, when the Carpathia arrived, there were so few lifeboats, all of which were filled, and not one person had survived in the water, clocking in at a staggering low 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, the deaths in the Titanic don't lay solely on the iceberg. For over a century, people have been asking why there were so few lifeboats on board. Why weren't the correct measures in place? Perhaps one of the most often asked questions is why the ship continued approaching the iceberg at the speed it did. The Titanic travelled at a speed of 20.5 knots, approximately 23.6 miles per hour, worsening the damage caused. 
Furthermore, the crew weren't adequately prepared for an emergency evacuation such as this. The faith in the unsinkable title became far too great. The lack of training and preparation meant that many lifeboats were sent off just half full, as officers didn't know how many people could safely fit upon a lifeboat. The iceberg was undeniably the cause for the Titanic sinking, though a great deal of other factors turned this into one of our history's most tragic events. The photographs of the iceberg failed to do justice to the severity of the collision. Between the hidden 90% below the surface and the failure to prepare for evacuation, that simple iceberg photographed seems far too innocent. The photographs and letters found tell the stories of the lives lost and the lives saved. Each and every person upon the ship has their own story to tell, many of which we will never get to hear. But what do you make of these Titanic photographs? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.